Aloha and welcome. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about string slicing. This is actually one of my favorite things because in the old days and older languages, uh, doing things like string slicing was extremely computationally intensive. Uh, we would have to go through loops generally and do a lot of uh, different uh, if else statements just to get what we can do in a simple line of code in Python. So let me go ahead and share my screen and show you the notes and our examples here. So hold on just a second. So <laughs> the first thing to know about uh, string slicing is uh, strings are a sequence type. We've talked about that before. They're ordered from left to right by an index. Uh, to see a value at uh, the index, you use a variable name with the index in brackets. So an example of that would be uh, something like this, uh, my string with an index. So my string is gonna be your, uh, your uh, string variable name. And then you have the square brackets and then the index, this will be an integer of some sort, or you could have it as a, a variable that comes out to an integer, but that's the idea. Uh, things to remember, uh, indexes are zero based. So it starts at zero and it goes up to the end. Uh, so if you, uh, the end of minus one. So if you had a string, let's say it's uh, five characters long, that would go from zero to four. So uh, that gets a little bit more confusing too when we get into slice notation. I'll show you in a minute, but when you're doing a, a slice, um, well, it says here, when you need to read more than one character at a time, we use slice notation. So we're gonna take a portion of the string. And what we do is we say my string of start to end. But in reality, this isn't getting start uh, well, it's getting start, but it's not getting end. It's getting all the way up to n minus one. So if you're doing something, let, let's say you've got uh, like right down here, our first example, we have my string. So I used the text long ago in a galaxy far, far away. So when we want to get the word long, we're gonna be uh, going from zero because we started zero, it's zero based. So we go zero, one, two, three, but zero to three, is uh, getting a slice from zero to three actually only gets a zero to two. So we give it one more than that. So we want zero to th uh, three. So we go zero to four here. I know this is confusing. It's uh, It takes a little bit of uh, getting used to, but when we go ahead and we uh, run this, you'll see, uh, let's go ahead and clear the screen here and run it. And you'll see that uh, we get the word long. So this is uh, convenient if, uh, you increase, or let's say, let's decrease that. Let's say we're gonna, if we misunderstood and we're like, oh, we're gonna get zero to three, zero, one, two, three, that should get me the G. Then you go and you hit it and you find out, oh, no, we missed the G. And that's because this is gonna be, uh, uh, it's, it's non-inclusive, we say. So it goes from zero up until three, but not including the third index. So uh, keep that in mind when you're slicing. So <laughs> anyway, continuing from that, um, uh, you can slice other sequence types like uh, lists and tuples. We won't be doing that right now, but uh, we'll get to that later. Um, you can also use an index beyond the actual uh, last character's index. And let me comment, that, or we, I wanna leave this in, but I'll comment this out. So if we do this, we put some ridiculously long integer here from, so we're gonna go from the first character all the way up to yeah, whatever this is, and we hit uh, play and run it, it's gonna get the entire string. It doesn't matter that it goes beyond this, uh, the end of the string. It'll just, uh, it'll clip it right at the, the last character. So that's convenient. If you, <laughs> if you ever have a situation and you really shouldn't do this, but if you know that, hey, I just, you know, I know it'll, you know, the end of it will be less than a million, you know, pop that in there and you can get the entirety of the string. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, forgiving in that sense. A lot of times uh, in other languages, you'll get something that'll say uh, index, you know, you'll get an index error, index out of range, something like that. So uh, we can also use negative numbers to specify an index relative to the end of the string. So if we're looking at this right here, we take my string, we're gonna start at zero. And then when uh, we say negative two, it's gonna end at negative two. Negative two is gonna be negative from the end of the string. So we're gonna take the entire thing from the beginning, the zeroth index, we're gonna go all the way up to the end, we're gonna back off by two. So when we run that, that should give us away minus the 
period in the Y. So that's exactly what we expect there. Uh, let's go ahead and comment that out. Now let's talk about ridiculous things. What if we try to get uh, negative 10 to negative two? What do you think is gonna happen there? Think about this, what is negative 10? Negative 10 would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So we'll start right there. And then to negative two, it'll go back that way. So right uh, to the Y. So that should give us the space to the A. So when we run it, sure enough, it gives us the space here at the beginning and it leaves off the Y. So it goes to that A. So you can use uh, negative in both your start and your end but you have to be careful because look what happens next here. If we go here and we try to do something that's kind of silly and doesn't make sense, we're saying we're gonna start two before the end, which is gonna be right here, and we're gonna go to negative uh, 10. It's not gonna reverse this, uh, this for us. So if we hit uh, uh, play here and run it, it's just gonna give us an empty string. So that's what's gonna happen if you try to do something where you're going uh, out of order with your uh, end and your start. So keep that in mind. So uh, another thing to remember is that creating a slice creates a new string. So if you're gonna go and create something out of, uh, let's say we take my string and we create, um, let's call it a uh, short string. We take short string and we say that it's equal to my string. Oops, yeah, let's do that properly. We're gonna take just, let's say the four characters. And then we, uh, Let's say we take um, my string and we uh, decide to change this to hello world. That will not affect our short string here. So we're gonna print out short string and then we're gonna print it out again after this assignment, just to show you that we're not, short string isn't pointing to uh, this, you know, a certain segment of here, it's actually a new string. So to prove that we change my string to show that short string is still the same thing it was pointing to before. So we'll go ahead and run it. And we see that it's long before. So uh, zero to four gives us long. And then we set my string to hello world. And then we print short string and it still maintains long. Why is that? Because long or short string is actually pointing to a different uh, string. So that is one interesting characteristic about uh, creating slices. Also, um, you can omit the start index to get everything from the beginning. And this is something you'll use uh, common. Let's say you're trying to get like a file name and you were to say a uh, file name equals um, my file.csv. Uh, and you want to get everything up, uh, you'd want to get everything from the beginning. So you could do that by saying file name from, you'll omit it, you'll just put in the colon. And then for the end, we will go to, hey, let's use that technique I mentioned earlier, just using a crazy long number there and see what it gives us. Should give us, right, the entire name. If we didn't want the CSV, let's say we wanted to, uh, let's say that we know that uh, we have a, an extension that's only three characters long. Let's say we want to get uh, minus the, the colon or minus the uh, period there. We hit the play here and that gives us the my file. And this is very useful because sometimes, let's say you want to operate on a file that's passed in like myfile.csv and then you want to save it as something else like maybe as a text file. So you want to get that first part of the, uh, the name, the my file part, but you don't want the extension. So you go and you do something like this where you grab the file name and then you can append the .xls or the .txt to your file name later on. So this is something I actually used today as I was coding. So uh, I was importing certain files and exporting uh, two or three files based on that. So I use this technique quite a lot. Actually, I used another technique uh, called find, but we're not gonna discuss that right now. But uh, keep that in mind that uh, you can use a negative or you can uh, omit the, uh, the character here in order to, uh, you can omit your uh, start 
and get everything from the first uh, or the zeroth uh, thing. So anyhow, uh, we can also do this at the other end of things. Let's say you wanted to start everything. Let's say we knew that the, uh, uh, let's see, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, so let's say we knew that we wanted to start at five and we just wanted to go to the end of it. So you can omit the end, it'll go all the way to the end. So omit the start, you go from the beginning, omit the end, you go uh, all the way to the end. So if we did this, oops, I didn't consider the period there. So we do six and that gives us the dot CSV that we want because zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So the sixth character is the period. So we can uh, use the, um, the blank end index to just get to the end of the entire string. So that is fun to do. Um, also uh, using a start index beyond the uh, end of the string or beyond the end index yields an empty string. So we can see that uh, by going in here, let's comment out these so we're not, and let's clean this up a little bit. So if we want to print my string, which if you remember is long ago in a galaxy far, far away, and we're gonna start beyond the end of the string, it'll just give us nothing. So if we hit print, you see it gives us an empty string. So that is nice that it doesn't give us an index error like other languages will. Um, also, uh, we have something called a slice stride so a slice stride is the amount that you increment the in index uh, by after you read each element. So let's say we have, uh, this is the example from the book. I thought it was a really good example, but if we took the numbers zero or uh, took a string zero through nine uh, and we just call it numbers, and then we wanna print all the numbers. So this is where we print all the numbers from the beginning because we're leaving it blank. So that goes to zero and then the end. So it goes all the way to the end there, which is I believe 10. And the stride is gonna be left out, which means it's one. So it's gonna go every single character. Now, the way that we get the even number ones is we're going to specify by leaving it blank, start to end. And we're gonna say every other one. So it's gonna start with the zero and then it's gonna skip one and it's gonna get two and then it's gonna skip three. It's gonna get four. So you see how it goes. So then we do every third number between one and eight. So what do we do? We're actually specifying the, um, the ones that we're gonna do here. We're saying start at one and go through nine. So that's gonna start us at one because it's zero base. So we're gonna start at one and we're gonna go all the way up to the ninth. So uh, this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So right here, and we're gonna go every third one. So when we hit play, you're gonna see that it gives us, uh, as we expected up here, it'll give us zero through nine. So zero through nine. And then for the even numbers, stepping every two or slicing every two, we get zero, two, four, six, eight. And now here we start at one, and we go to nine, getting every third one. So we get the one, we skip over the two and the three, then we get the four, and we skip over the five and the six, and we get the seven, and then we omit the eight. So <clears throat> that's just what we expected there. Uh, so this is uh, string slicing, essentially. You know, it's it's it looks, a bit confusing when you consider your end index particularly, and when you're using negative uh, integers, you can get a little bit uh, confused with those, but work it over, uh, do some examples and get used to it. And you'll find that string slicing is really nice. It's easy, it's so simple to do. And this is a construct that was missing from a lot of the languages that I started out with. And that's why I love string slicing because you can do something in one expression that you used to have to do using loops and all kinds of logic. And it would, you know, you'd basically make a function to do something like this. And now you can do it in just one little expression. It's just so powerful and it's really nice to, to get uh, used to using this. So uh, if you have any questions, I know some of these uh, concepts may have been a little bit confusing, but if you have any questions, as always, feel free to reach out to me. I'm always here to help. 
send me an email. Uh, if you need, I can uh, set up a Zoom meeting with you and we can go through this and uh, work some examples out. So uh, if you have no other questions, we will continue on and I will see you in the next lesson. Aloha.